So this lecture is about the set covering problem, which is a specific kind of facility location problem. And to motivate this, let's look at this graph, uh, a graphic of the US. And this is a company that only has two distribution centers. And you can see in the, the light blue, uh, they're able to use one day ground to get to those people. In the green, they can use two day ground. In orange, they can use three day ground. And in brown, four day ground. And so if they're a company um, that has said, I want to make two day deliveries uh, like Amazon, they can also use the air, which is the dotted stuff. And so one of the things to note uh, is they're not able to reach my parents, <laughs> which live right here in this, right in the middle of that brown part uh, in two days. And so uh, when I talk to my mom, if I send her something and it's late, uh, you could blame supply chain network design for why my mom's package is late. And so companies nowadays really want to get you stuff fast. Um, and so you could think about what else could we do if we wanted to say we want to reach all customers in the US in one day. What are things we have available to us to do that? You may say, well, we could build more distribution centers. So one answer would be have more facilities. Instead of the example I just showed you, having two, what if I had three, four, five, six, seven? That would get us closer. We could then reach all of our customers in one day. You could also think about changing the mode of transportation. So for example, if I need to get to everybody in one day, I could pay for air shipments, which is more expensive, but they're faster. And so I wouldn't have to increase my number of locations, but I could pay for faster um, transportation. Um, another option would be to think about if I could be faster within my facilities, that gives me more time to use that extra time for transportation. So when you think about when you click something online, there is a time that it takes inside of the facility to fulfill your order. If you can make that faster, you have more um, range in terms of transportation. So that would get you something. It probably wouldn't still reach my mom in two days, but you could get maybe a little bit further than what you were just seeing. And then one kind of creative way you could think about doing this is what if I use or retrofit some of my facilities that I were using for retail to fulfill online orders? So if I'm a retail facility, I may only have a couple distribution centers, but I have a lot of stores. And so if I could fulfill online orders from stores, I could get close to reaching all of my customers in one day without building extra facilities. And in fact, lots of people are actually doing this. This is what's called ship from store. Um, and these are all companies that have said that they want to do this. The main concept is that in retail stores, they're picking e-commerce orders. So if you've ever gone to like a Target or Walmart, and you saw like an employee picking things into their cart, they're oftentimes doing that for what's called store-based fulfillment. And so they're picking online orders from retail stores. Um, this is good from a transportation perspective, from reaching our consumers. It's a little less good from a picking perspective. And so stores are not designed to be efficient picking, they're designed for you and I to go shopping. And so there are trade-offs associated with doing um, ship from store and there are interesting opportunities here and if you're interested I'm working on some research in this area um, but one of the things from a network design perspective that's interesting is to try to say how do I determine which store should I equip to send orders to customers and so this is a broader perspective ship from stores a broader perspective known as omni-channel which is a little bit of a buzzword these days, but the idea of omni-channel is if I'm a customer, I can shop in whatever way I want. I can walk and go to a brick and mortar store, I can shop online, I can use my mobile phone, I could call someone, all of those different things, and I would still get kind of the same um, shopping experience. And this is really driven by what we expect as, as customer expectations, but also the fact that all of us are using technology. This is in um, contrast to multi-channel, which has all of these things, but they were all kind of done separately. So if I went to the store, I couldn't return it somewhere else. Um, and so the idea of omni-channel is it's seamless and it goes back and forth. So one way I could think about thinking about omni-channel is you can buy it online, I could get it fulfilled from a retail store, I could get it delivered to my house, and then I could return it to a different store. 
So it's like you can do all of this different combinations um, and the supply chain network would be designed to do that. And so there would be aspects of physical supply chain network, the fact that stores now need to be able to do returns, they need to be able to be able to fulfill your online orders for you to pick them up. So there's like physical things and then there's like inventory and IT and there's all kinds of cool kind of research questions. Um, but today in this COVID-19 life we're living, you may have bought something online and picked it up in store. That's an example of an omni-channel um, example. You may have bought something online but returned it in store, or you may have had things shipped from the store. And one way to figure that out is if you get anything online and you look at um, your ticket, sometimes it's shipped from, for example, a mall, and you might also get multiple shipments, um, even if you ordered one um, order, it may be coming from different locations. So this is an interesting and I think dynamic aspect of supply chains that is evolving and people are figuring out, um, but it's an area that potentially you could get a job in and work on and try to understand how should your network look like, how should your inventory, how should your transportation be in an omni-channel environment. All right, so using that as a motivating scenario, let's use that um, ship from store network design to study uh, the set covering problem. So the idea here is we have a retailer that has nine retail locations. So we have nine stores um, and they have made an announcement that they want to provide one hour delivery service to all of their customers. And so given ship from store operations, it requires space, it requires resources and training and IT. We don't want to necessarily put this capability in all nine stores. Instead, we want to determine which stores should we designate a ship from store locations in order to provide this one hour delivery guarantee to all customers. All right, so given that, um, this is a schematic. So all of the nodes, the circles are stores. There are nine of them. There are um, nine different stores. The um, information on the arcs is the amount of time it takes to get from this store to this uh, store's neighborhood. And if we wanna fulfill all people's orders within one hour, that it does take some time to pick the order and do all that stuff. So um, we need to determine how can we have the transportation part of this problem be only 30 minutes or less and to get to all neighborhoods. So you could think about these as like a target and they're in a neighborhood. So if I live in my local neighborhood, I would be able to serve the people in that neighborhood. I could also drive to this neighborhood in 20 minutes and also serve them. So if we needed to, uh, we wanna minimize the number of these locations that need to be um, accommodated with ship from store um, capabilities. How many of them would you need to do? So please pause this video and figure out and think through this and say, okay, what do you think is the answer? So hopefully you have done that. Um, and if you have, um, the correct answer is two. You can build um, in location three. If I build in location three, I can cover three. I can get to one within 30 minutes, I can get to two within 30 minutes, I can get to four within 30 minutes, and I can get to five within 30 minutes. Um, and then if I also build an eight, I can serve eight, nine in 30 minutes, seven in 30 minutes, and six in 30 minutes. And the key here is all uh, neighborhoods have to be covered within a 30 minute driving distance. So the minimum number of locations you can build in to do that would be two. Um, so what did we just do? We just uh, solved a set covering problem. And a set covering problem is a network optimization problem, which we'll talk about in the next video about how to formulate. But if you think about this, we had nine potential locations that we could build in. Um, and if we built in one, what would we, we would be able to cover uh, the people in neighborhood one, two, and three. Why? Because if I build in one, we're also within 30 minutes of two and within 30 minutes of three. So if I build in one, I am able to meet my requirement um, in neighborhoods one, two, and three. So we could do that for each one of these different retail nodes. Um, and then what we need to do is figure out, we wanna pick the minimum number of these retail nodes where all one through nine are covered. And so for this example, the answer is to build in three and to build in eight. 
All right, so more formally, what is the set covering problem? The set covering problem minimizes the cost of locating facilities from a set of potential facility locations under the constraint that all demand locations need, need to be covered within a pre-specified criteria. Oftentimes this pre-specified criteria is within a certain distance, certain time, maybe you have to be adjacent to something. It can be anything, but it needs to be um, pre-specified and all demand locations have to be covered by that. So it makes some assumptions. First of all, it ignores budgetary constraints. So in our example, what if we don't have the budget to build in both of these facilities? What if we only have the budget to build in one? It doesn't incorporate any um, budgetary constraints. Um, and so if that is the case, you could think about a max demand service model, which is an adjustment where you don't have to guarantee that you meet everyone, but you try to guarantee that you, you try to maximize how many people you meet. So a couple things to think about is uh, more generally the minimizing the cost. In the example I just did, I assumed each location had the same cost. We will generalize that. The other key thing is that all demand locations need to be covered. Um, and so that means, what does that mean? All demand locations need to be served within a predefined criteria. All of them have to be reachable within 30 minutes. All of them have to be blank, 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 whatever that criteria is. What that means is uh, the set covering model locates facilities to ensure equitability, meaning all customers get the same service level. Um, and so what does that mean? That means Oprah would love the set covering model. You all get covered, right? Um, and so that is going to be different and in contrast to other facility location models we'll learn in upcoming lectures. So one question I have for you is, given this is very equitable, meaning all customers must be covered, what are examples of when this metric would be appropriate that we could use for the facility location problem? So if you've thought about this, there's a couple of different alternatives. Um, one is something that's a service like e-commerce and it says, I want two day delivery to all my customers. Um, pizza delivery sometimes is that. Um, Domino's used to say, I would deliver your pizza within 30 minutes or you get it free, right? They didn't say some people get 30 minutes, some people get an hour, right? All of them did that. Um, one that might be a little less obvious is things in private industry that require the um, company to drive somewhere. So thinking about lawn care services, oftentimes for it to be financially viable, the only uh, serve customers in certain locations that it doesn't take too far to drive from, right? So those are other examples. Probably the most obvious examples though are things in more public services where equity is important, that all residents should receive the same service levels. So you can think about when they have to locate a fire station or they locate ambulances or schools. If someone is sick, we want to make sure we can reach them within a certain criteria. And so we need to determine where should we put our resources to meet that criteria. And so that's common in, again, public service. And so I will pause there and then we'll start some more videos um, that have to do with how do we actually formulate the set covering model and use it to solve an example.